Hey everybody. A couple of weeks ago, um, we sculpted a whale in Sculptress and then afterwards uh, rigged it using Blender 3D. Now the whale was a bit of a cheat because it's a really kind of a, a simple form and the rig worked out perfectly. Well tonight I'm going to show you how to rig a much more complicated model and this is one that where the rigging doesn't work so well and how you can fix it. So um, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in Blender, and I've got my Styracosaurus model loaded. Now this is a static model, but I want to be able to pose it. And in order to do that, I'm going to create what's called a rig, or a, in Blender's case, we call it an armature. Um, what that is, it's sort of an underlying skeleton that will um, attach to the, this model. And when you move the joints of that skeleton, the, uh, the overlying model will move along with it. So to start, what we have to do is make sure our 3D cursor is at the center point. And actually, the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go into orthogonal mode. And to do that, I just go to View and click right here. And you could also click the number pad 5. That just makes things look a little bit more even while we're working. Um, now I'm, also, I'm going to snap that uh, cursor to center. And that's going to put the cursor at the center. And the reason we want it at the center is that when we create our first bone, it's going to create where the cursor is. And we want that bone to be perfectly centered. Um, so if I look at this from the front, you can see here that the cursor is perfectly centered right below the center line of the Styracosaurus. So let's go and add our first bone. So I click the Add button here, and I'm going to select Armature and Single Bone. And you can see it added it right there where the cursor was. And I'm going to uh, left click on the blue arrow here and move this up towards somewhere around the middle of the Styracosaurus. Now we can't see the bone, it's um, disappeared into the model. So if you need to see it, you can just click on this uh, little thing that looks like a little man right here, and X-ray, and now you'll be able to see through the model to your bone. So we want to keep looking at this from the side now. We're going to build the uh, spine for this dinosaur. So let's go to view from the right, and then we're going to go into edit mode and just right click on the uh, little dot at the top here and I'm going to use the blue and green arrows to kind of position that and the same with this side of the bone and this will be his hip bone now, if you want you can go in and name these bones individually but for now we'll just uh, we're not going to worry about that okay so now we're going to grow this spine out and to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the E key to extrude you're going to extrude right click and then use the arrows to move this. And this keeps it on the center line in case for some reason you're not perfectly on the uh, the side view. So if I were to, uh, let's say, extrude here and then try to move like this, you'll notice I wasn't perfectly on the side view. So now if I look at the top, you'll see that the, bone, the end of the bone is actually moved off the center line. And you don't want that. So use the arrows. That will uh, prevent you from uh, getting off the center line there. So extrude, E key, right click, and then use the arrows to position the the input, the uh, the joint, the next joint. Same thing, and just keep doing this for the whole spine. Not going to make as uh, each uh, bone you put makes them a little bit more flexible. And we'll go up here and we'll do the uh, top part of his body. And then we're going to do one for the head. All right, now to do the uh, limbs, you want to be able to, you want them to be perfectly symmetrical. So what you're going to do is going to click where the uh, the hip joins to the uh, spine, which will be this uh, joint right here. I'm going to extrude, right click, then I'm going to hit the G key, which is for grab. And then I'm going to hit the X key, which will lock movement into the X plane, and then the number one. And that moves that one one uh, grid mark over to the uh, to the x direction. And then I'm going to click enter. So to do the uh, right the other side, we're going to click again on that center joint of the spine. We're going to extrude, right click, G X negative one, and enter. And then I can shift and right click here. And now I have both these joints selected, and I can use the arrow keys to move them around try to center them to about where the hip joins in. 
Now you see they're out a little bit too far, so to move them both in at the same time, you can't use the red arrow because that'll move them left and right at simultaneously. You need to hit the S key, which is the scale, and kind of uh, move the mouse in towards that a little bit, and that'll move them inwards. So now we can extrude both at the same time. I just hit the extrude again, and I use the arrow keys to position the knee joints. I think I want to move those hip joints up a little bit. So put them right about there. All right, so we'll click on the two knee joints again, extrude, right click, and then use the arrows to uh, position those for the ankle joints. And make sure they look like they're centered in those uh, ankles or in the dinosaur's legs. And then we'll do some feet. And we'll have one more for the toes. And then we're just going to do the same thing for the arms. So uh, extrude, right click, GX1, enter. Extrude, right click, GX, negative one, enter. And shift to click both of those. Kind of move them out to where the shoulders are going to be. Use the scale, the S button, to move them in just a bit. A bit more. Extrude. We'll go down and do the elbow joints. And I'll move those in just a tiny bit. Extrude. And that will be the wrist joints there. And then we'll do one for the hands. And just like that, we have the uh, internal skeleton for our rigging. Okay, so now that we have the skeleton, one thing you might want to do that might help you a little bit is to actually give the bones uh, better names. And if you click on this little bone tab here, whenever you select a bone, and I'm in edit mode still, um, I get the name of that bone. And so you can go through and name all these bones. So if I want to name this one, you know, head bone. and maybe this one neck bone and on down the line I can name all the bones and I, I like to do that just so um, if I need to come back and edit them later it's a little bit easier to figure out which bone is which okay so now we have our skeleton um, and uh, we have our model but they're not quite tied together so if I try to go in pose mode for the skeleton here for the rig and move it around nothing happens I mean the uh, the bone moves but the model doesn't move along with it we have to tie the two together what we're going to do is set a parent-child relationship between the two and to do that I'm going to go into object mode uh, select the dinosaur first then shift and right click to select the rig that selects both hit control P and do arm select armature deform with automatic weights and that's going to do all the magic of creating uh, vertex groups in this Dyracosaurus model that match the bones that are closest to it. And it grinds away for a few minutes. And then once that's done, you can uh, select just the rig, arm, the, uh, the rig object and go into pose mode again. And now we'll pick maybe the tail and move that. And you see it, the tail moves very nice and smooth along with the... Uh, the rig underneath it's really nice however sometimes it's not perfect so you got to go through and check to see if um, the skeleton the uh, the rig and the model married up correctly and so you see here here's a problem we have some stuff that didn't make it into the head group into the head bone group and so we can fix that it used to be something that was very difficult to do you'd have to go in and set vertices and figure out weights and such but in uh, the latest versions of uh, blender all you have to do is go into um, object mode, select the dinosaur, and over here in the vertex groups, you need to find the, the group that was created for the head. And now the groups are created based on the bone names. And I went through um, off camera and named all the bones, so you can see right shoulder bone and all that, this kind of stuff. So if I were in. Uh, edit mode I could um, select that group 
you know, select the right arm bone group, stuff like that. Deselect. That's good, but we're going to go, well, we need to be in object mode for this part to start with. And we're going to need to find the head bone. And there's an awful lot of bones here. Ah, here's the head bone. So I'm going to select that group. And then I'm going to go what's into, into a new mode called weight paint. And you see here, um, red basically means it's applied exactly to that group. And as you transition to blue, it's things that are not applied to that group. Because you, you don't want it to be exact you know, here where the joints actually appear so that the uh, model deforms correctly. But the parts that well, you can see here, these horns didn't make it in at all. And they need to actually be in red because they need to move completely with the head. So to do that, you just make sure your strength is up at 1. And you just brush over. And actually, there's something I forgot. You want to make sure that you're getting all the way through the mesh. Because um, what's going to happen here, if I go into pose mode for that uh, rig again, after you saw me do that, some of the uh, vertices underneath that horn won't have gotten assigned to the group. So if I go into pose mode and try to move, lots of really weird things start to happen. So what you want to do to fix that, uh, go into object mode, uh, select your dinosaur again, make sure its head bone is the group selected, and then go into weight paint mode. Just click this little thing right here, and this will make it so you kind of get all the surfaces uh, through the mesh. You gotta be real careful you don't want to click on any part of the mesh that you don't want to be part of the group. So you might have to kind of turn it this way and that to get it just right. Now if you want part of the uh, model not to be completely transitioned to red, maybe you want it to kind of stick to the other bones a little bit, you could set the strength down to something like 0.5 and you know do something like um, oops I missed the uh, 0.5 0 0.5 alright and then I could do something like that and there it paint, you can see it didn't paint red it just painted it to green however right now we're just assigning stuff to the head so let's go all the way back up to one And let's go in and make sure we get all those horns on his head. All right, looks like we might have gotten it all. So let's go into uh, object mode, select the rig, and then go into pose mode, and we'll test that out. And now you can see we got the whole head moving just the way we want it. So now I can go in and pose this guy to my heart's content. I give him some nice dramatic pose with his legs. And if the rig starts to get in your way, you can always turn off the x-ray mode and it won't you won't see it as much. So anyway, that's um, shows you how you can uh, kind of do a more complicated rig. Now I, I sort of picked a slightly easier case here. A lot of times when I create a rig I spend a lot of time in weight paint mode fixing various bones. In, the, in this case it just happened to work out that only the uh, the horns and the, the dinosaur's head were uh, not making it. But a lot of times if you're doing fingers and stuff like that you gotta spend a bit of time fixing things. But it's still way easier than something like Poser where you have to sit there and select individual polygons to assign to groups. So I hope this is something that you'll find useful and thank you everybody and good night. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more or read some of my articles or even check out some of my art you can find me on my blog at www.introvertartist.com and here I post articles on how to make art, how to sell it online, tools that you can use. Uh, I have links to my gallery as well as a, you can subscribe to my newsletter here. And my newsletter is something I send out every Wednesday with news on my latest uh, artworks, articles, videos, promotions, discounts, and I even throw in a, few, a free computer wallpaper every week. So thanks everybody and good night.